Oh, man. Sean Diddy Combs' alleged list of accomplices to be revealed soon. The names will shock you, attorney says. Whoa. From Diddy's mansions being raided to his alleged associates list leaking, Hollywood elites who knew about Diddy's illegal activities are in big trouble. In a recent podcast episode, Joe Rogan discussed a shocking list of Hollywood actors allegedly linked to Diddy, sparking intense speculation and fueling rumors across the industry. Known for his outspoken nature, Rogan hinted at prominent names who may have been involved in controversial deals dealings with the music mogul. This revelation comes amid Diddy's ongoing legal troubles, adding further intrigue and speculation about his public image. But yeah. the people that are in the position to actually know the people's names on the list, yeah. those people are probably in trouble. Yeah. Because that's a crazy piece of information to have. And the fact is that, look. No one's been tried. No one's been brought, no one's been discussed. We know who went there. We know flight logs. No one talks about anything. There's no effort to prosecute. As Rogan's claims make waves, fans and critics alike are left questioning the nature and extent of these alleged connections and anticipating what additional details might emerge. Rogan, who has frequently drawn unsettling comparisons between Diddy and Jeffrey Epstein, highlighted notorious parties hosted by both men. Uh, I did this interview with Oscar Willis, right? And I started talking about the whole, this is when Epstein just got arrested. Mm. And I was saying like, well, Epstein just got arrested, right? And then Oscar goes, yeah, it's funny how the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard uh, case is getting more attention than that. And I'm like, crazy, isn't it? So this Epstein guy just uh, sold kids or whatever, trafficked them to these rich oligarchs and whatnot. I was like, what happened to them? What happens to those people? Where's the list? Alongside his guest, Israel Adesanya, Rogan raised disturbing points about accusations involving illegal activities with young women and the potential for exploitation, adding an even darker edge to the conversation. Jennifer Lopez is going to be there. Oh, Rick That's Ross is going to be there. Everyone's going to be there. And that would be a cool place. I want to meet those people. Facts. And yeah. I just want to be there having fun partying, but then they start to, apparently, they said they were using... I'm going to guess it's like ketamine because they said horse tranquilizer mm. and they're putting in people's drinks in the champagne and then getting them all loose. Yeah. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a secret. Israel went ahead to say how he dodged a bullet when he once got invited to a Diddy party but did not make it. He expressed how Diddy would drug his victims, put them in compromising situations, and record it on tape for blackmail. Because right, who knows? Right, right, like you never right. know. Oh, yeah, we're having this party later on. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah, cool, cool. And then they start to like, you know, you find some chick, you pull on you, and then boom, oh, how was that 15 year old? Like, wait, what? Right. And yeah. you're filmed. Yeah. I and heard then, about that. Yeah. yeah. He but had again. apparently, allegedly, cameras yeah, all, allegedly. all over the house and a hundred thousand <laughs> bottles of baby oil. <laughs> yeah. What? Nobody's that ashy, bro. <laughs> 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 a thousand. But also, by the way, that <laughs> lube, coconut oil is better, water based lubricant. Yeah. But baby oil is acidic as Johnson and Johnson's. Like, that's demonic, bro. Like, why would you use baby oil? <laughs> Even Old if you to do is, nah! While nobody has yet been officially tried, people speculate that the feds are taking their time to build a case against Diddy and all his associates. But that doesn't mean that people online are not doing their own investigations. A few weeks ago, a list of purported freak-off parties attendants surfaced online. And man, did it cause outrage after people witnessed the names of their favorite celebs who had attended the freak-offs. But how did this list come to be? Following Diddy's arrest, Gene Deal, who used to be one of Diddy's bodyguards, stunned everyone with his revelations. He claimed that Diddy, along with several close associates, and even some big name celebrities and politicians, might all be in serious trouble. According to Deal, these people were reportedly caught on tape taking part in Diddy's wild parties, known as freak offs. Gene claims that Diddy secretly set up more than 250 hidden cameras throughout the houses where he hosted parties. Since these gatherings attracted many powerful and influential people in the entertainment industry, the cameras were placed all around the homes to capture anything that happened there. Hidden cameras meant that nobody knew they were being watched or being recorded, and in Gene's words, if somebody got caught stealing a cookie out of the cookie jar, they had been captured on tape in all angles. But Gene had more beans to spill. In an interview with The Art of Dialogue, Gene explained that the people recorded during these wild parties included well-known and respected pastors, popular politicians, and other celebrities. They had no idea they were being filmed and likely thought they were safe from anyone seeing what went on. But Brother Love was watching. When the feds come to them and show them what they got on tape, 
Because if he had 250 tapes all over, 250 cameras all over the house, somebody got caught stealing a cookie out the cookie jar. It could be your favorite pastor. It could be your favorite politician. But they didn't think they was being watched. And Brother Love was watching. In the interview, Gene revealed that the famous Pastor T.D. Jakes could have been caught on tape engaging in the freak-offs, considering his long-term friendship with Diddy. According to Gene, if T.D. Jakes actually took part in these so-called freak-offs, and a tape of it somehow got out, it would deeply hurt his congregation. They'd feel heartbroken and let down because of how much they trusted him. However, Gene doesn't directly say that the pastor actually took part in the freak-offs, but he points out that the real issue is the congregation congregation's misplaced trust. Instead of keeping their faith in God, the congregation has put their faith in the pastor, a regular man with a past that's far from spotless. Yes, Gene did not actually admit that T.D. Jakes was a participant in the freak-offs. However, that did not get the famous pastor off the hook, since his name appeared in a lawsuit against Diddy filed by his producer, Rodney Lil Rod Jones. In the lawsuit, Lil Rod accuses Diddy and several of his associates of participating in sex trafficking ventures. The civil lawsuit filed in a U.S. federal court in New York Southern District and shared with USA Today claims that for over a year, Diddy repeatedly harassed, drugged, and intimidated Jones with threats. But what does this lawsuit have to do with the Dallas megachurch pastor of the Potter's house? We are getting there. The lawsuit states that Lil Rod has irrefutable evidence of Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Even though though T.D. Jakes isn't listed as a defendant in the lawsuit, but that didn't stop people from bringing him into the spotlight and taking a deeper look at his relationship with Diddy. In December 20th, 23, the Dallas Morning News reported that there were rumors on social media claiming Jakes was involved in sex parties hosted by Diddy. These reports haven't been verified, but they've sparked plenty of online chatter and scrutiny. Seeing the nature of attention this was bringing to his name for the wrong reasons, Jakes responded to the reports in a Christmas Eve service at the Potter's house. Jake said, The worst that could happen, if everything was true, all I got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. There's enough power in the blood to cover all kinds of sin. I don't care what it is, the blood would fix it. But I ain't gotta repent about this. In another church service, T.D. Jakes refused to address what he referred to as false claims in a holy pulpit. During the service, Jake said that he would not use that sacred day and sacred pulpit to address the lies against him when he can use the platform to preach the truth that comes from God. I will not use this sacred day and this sacred pulpit to address a lie when I have a chance to preach a truth. But how did a man of faith come to know someone like Diddy? In 2021, T.D. Jakes launched a new series of sermons on the cable TV network Revolt Media, which is owned by Sean Diddy Combs. This marked a fresh collaboration where Jakes shared his messages with a broader audience through Diddy's channel. It's no surprise that someone like Diddy would take notice of T.D. Jakes, given Jakes' strong faith and the incredible impact he's made on so many people. As a well-known and respected figure, T.D. Jakes naturally stands out and it would be hard for any anyone, especially someone like Diddy, to overlook him. After that, Diddy and T.D. Jake started appearing together in different photos and events. This led many people to wonder what kind of relationship they had. While some thought that there was more to it behind the scenes, others believed that the pictures of Diddy and T.D. Jakes was nothing but a celebrity photo shoot since the pastor had used Diddy's network to broadcast his message. But then things took a twisted turn. 
In early March of this year, Diddy decided to sell his share in Revolt Media, the network he founded back in 2013. He sold it to a buyer whose identity remains unknown. This was after he stepped down as chairman of Revolt Media in late 2023. Was this a way to get enough money to protect himself from the coming storm? A few months later, after he had sold his share, two of Diddy's houses were searched by federal agents, including officials from Homeland Security Investigations. As people speculate why TD Jakes would want to be associated with Diddy, many believe that Diddy might have some leverage over the famous pastor, perhaps videos of him caught in compromising situations. This seems to be true because since Diddy's arrest, no celebrity has come out to speak against or in support of Diddy, at least not publicly. From Gene's point of view, people are too afraid to talk about Diddy's case. They worry that their names could be mentioned in the tapes taken by the authorities, and they fear they might have been recorded doing things they shouldn't have been doing. This fear keeps them silent, as they don't want to risk getting caught up in any trouble so you feel like celebs are worried that they might be on tape oh they know that's why they ain't speaking up or saying nothing yeah i was at a diddy party but i know i ain't do nothing uh when you don't know somebody's taping you when you don't know that somebody is videoing you in some kind of form of fashion you, and you got that alcohol, you got the drugs in you, they're a little loose, bruh. They let down all their inhibitions. The music is pumping. He said it himself. He got it so hot in there that you gotta take your clothes off. But again, let's make one thing clear. All the stories trending online regarding the relationship between Diddy and TD Jakes and the pastor's attendance at the freak offs are nothing but allegations since no official statement incriminating the pastor has been made. For this reason, all we can do is wait for official confirmation from the feds before accusing the influential pastor of being part of Diddy's freak offs. But TD Jakes is not the only influential person whose name is mentioned in Lil Rod's sexual assault lawsuit against Diddy. In his lawsuit, which includes a mix of stories, photographs, and screenshots, Lil Rod states that back in January 2023, Diddy arranged a meeting for him with the Oscar-winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. According to Lil Rod, Diddy then left the two of them alone together in a studio on his yacht. Yuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks and his shoulders, Lil Rod's lawsuit alleges. The complaint features a photo that supposedly shows Gooding Jr. with his arm around Jones. Additionally, there is another image that reportedly depicts Diddy and Gooding having a conversation on the yacht, but it gets even more interesting. Interesting. According to the lawsuit, Mr. Combs had dominion and control over the actions of Cuba Gooding Jr. and failed to step in and stop Cuba Gooding Jr. from sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. Could this have been a calculated attempt by Diddy to hook up with Gooding and Lil Rod? While some people might hit back at Lil Rod for including Gooding in his lawsuit, this is not the first time the award-winning actor has been accused of sexual assault. Cuba Gooding Jr. pleaded guilty to forcibly touching a woman at a New York nightclub in 2018. The guilty plea came nearly three years after the Oscar-winning Jerry Maguire star was arrested. The case saw several delays as his lawyer sought to get charges reduced or dismissed. Can you guys speak at the microphones here? This, this case is going to be tried in one day. There's a video of exactly what took place. And we believe that the video unequivocally will show that Cuba committed absolutely no crime. And we expect this case to be dismissed in one day. Gooding, who was accused of committing sexual offenses against three different women at various nightlife venues in Manhattan during 2018 and 2019, entered a guilty plea for only one of the accusations. He told the judge that he kissed the waitress on her lips without consent at the Lavo New York nightclub, but it gets even worse. Gooding also confessed to making unwanted physical contact with two other women in October 2018 and June 2019, as stated by the district attorney's office. The plea came during a scheduled hearing hearing in the case Wednesday, two years after Gooding was first charged and following multiple hearings, many of which were postponed or continued. Previous negotiations over a plea agreement had stalled under former district attorney Cyrus Vance. 
In a statement to USA Today, Gooding's attorney, Peter Tumbekis, said, Today, two of the three cases were dismissed. And as for the third case, Cuba Gooding Jr. entered into a repleter today, whereby in six months his case will be disposed of with a violation, which is not a crime, resulting in no criminal record. Let's break down the jargon for you. Gooding reached a plea deal that would allow him to avoid any jail time. According to the agreement, if he committed to attending counseling sessions for six months, he would have the option to take back his misdemeanor plea and instead plead guilty to a less serious offense of harassment. However, if he failed to follow through with the counseling, he could face a potential jail sentence of up to one year. And by now, you can already guess what happened after this. During the court appearance, Assistant District Attorney Colleen Balbert said that they fully credited and believed all of the survivors survivors in the case and thanked all of the women and other witnesses who cooperated with his office during the pendency of their investigation. On top of that, Balbert said they were able to reach a disposition in this matter after lengthy discussions between the defense, myself, and the complaining witnesses in this case. As serious as these allegations towards Gooding were, something happened in his favor. The district attorney's office later disclosed that the judge overseeing the case decided to take a different approach. The judge ruled that prosecutors would not be permitted to present Molyneux testimony, which refers to witnesses discussing prior bad acts during the trial of Gooding. This is because Molyneux testimony could be used to help establish that a defendant has engaged in an alleged pattern of criminal behavior. Testimony regarding alleged crimes that have not led to formal charges can play a significant role in influencing a jury's decision. This kind of information may help sway the jury's opinion and lead them to convict the defendant on the specific charges that have been brought against them. But in the case of Gooding, that was not allowed. This meant that the sexual assault case against Gooding would be treated as if it's the first one. Following this, many wondered why the judge made that decision. Were Gooding lawyers that good? Or did Gooding's connections and influence help him get favor in the judge's eyes? Guess we'll never know. In the case of Lil Rod, people now believe that his lawsuit against Diddy and Gooding is genuine considering Gooding's sexual assault history and Diddy's alleged sex trafficking crimes that were mentioned in Cassie's lawsuit against the music mogul. With T.D. Jakes brought up in Lil Rod's suit and Gooding's past of sexual assault, it makes you wonder just how deep this wild story about Diddy really goes. Who else is rumored to be tied up in Diddy's circle and what part might they play in this hidden world? Subscribe to stay informed.